Hi Billy, thanks very much for taking the time out to talk to us. Um, do you want to start off by just telling us who you are, what you do and give us a little bit of background information about Yo Sushi's IT? Yeah, so I'm the IT manager for Yo Sushi. I've been there coming up to nine years. Um, we've been going, Yo Sushi's been going for about 15 years and we've got um, 60 restaurants in the UK approximately. It's growing all the time. Um, our IT department is very lean, it's just myself. We try to maintain a, a small team at head office and then try to outsource quite a lot of our services and, and use the managed service rather than doing it ourselves. So you've got quite an unusual setup because you've obviously you have your head offices and then lots of satellite yes. satellite offices. So can you talk us through your setup before you did this migration? So before we did this migration, we had a Exchange 2003 server that sat at head office. I think that went in around seven or eight years ago, sort of when that edition first came out. And it served us well for the period it's been in, but we've got to the stage now where it's um, the licensing for the data volumes isn't up to what we need and the functionality just isn't up to what we need either. So what kind of, how, how are you servicing your users? What, what kind of IT do you need for your head office function and what kind of IT do you need in your restaurants? So probably say we have 50 people at head office approximately, maybe a few less, some come and go. And only about 10 of those are permanently based in the office, which is your, your finance team, your number crunchers. Everybody else is either sort of part-time at head office, part-time in the field or, or totally field based. So it's really important that everyone can access their emails and any information sort of anytime, anywhere, if you like, when they're on the road or whether they're at home or whether they're in our restaurants. So what was the major driver for this migration? What, what was it, was it a, a kind of a, I, I need something new and shiny, or yeah, well, talk, we, talk us through the motivation? We all like something new and shiny, but the, the, the real driver was the old system was at its end of life. The server was old, um, it was creaking, it was full up. Again, I mentioned the licenses we had for Exchange Server 2003 were, the, the data volumes weren't up to what we needed anymore. Um, and it, it was just time, time for an upgrade. Okay, so you were looking when you were looking at your upgrade options. What did we do? What did you do? Yeah, how did how did you begin the process? So we looked at three options. We went to three suppliers who who we knew did sort of slightly different things, and we looked at the traditional, simply buy a new server, buy an Exchange 2010 license, and upgrade on premise. So we were replicating like for like, albeit with more up to date versions on site. Um, the second possibility we looked at was by putting our own server in a data centre and installing Exchange 2010 on and managing it ourselves but having it off site and the third was the total managed solution, the Office 365 which I believe was BPOS when we were first looking at it but Office 365 by the time we started to move. So how did how did you prepare? What what were the um, the pros and cons of each of the the options for you guys? Why did you end up going with the fully managed solution? So what what we wanted to do was um, avoid having to put more IT skills in house, um, reduce costs as everyone does, and make sure that the the access truly was universal. We could get anything from anywhere, and um, by putting something on site, we just got something that was more technical. Um, more expensive and we would need more people to manage it whereas by going totally to the managed service you know we could remain with just myself um, we also found we reduced our costs by about 40 percent per year like for like so just on email we were reducing it by that but we also got the added benefits of link and sharepoint online bolted on um, what we also found and what was a big driver was it took away our disaster recovery requirements or really minimised them. You know, we don't need to back up our exchange anymore. Uh, people may say, you know, do you trust your data with Microsoft? You know, we did our due diligence, we're happy. So, good for us. So can you talk us through the planning stages because moving any kind of migration of the size is, is not going to be a, a kind of a, an immediate switch on. What kind of auditing did you need to do of the existing kit? Yeah, so we, um, we chose a partner to work with for the, for the exercise and, and the way we worked with them is we said, right, we want you to plan our migration and we want you to drip feed it to us, you know, go through it to start with, say this is what's going to happen and then drip feed it to me in stages so that it's like, okay, first thing you need to do is this. So I would go away carry out that audit or, or that installation or, or what need to be done, go back to them and say, yep, that's done, and then they would provide the next, the next part, which sort of 
broke it down into nice bite-sized chunks. Um, we had a fairly good idea of what we had at head office in terms of you know, PCs, laptops and what version of Outlook etc people were running but it was a bit more sporadic in our, our, lo in our sort of restaurant sites and was going to take time to find out. But we worked around that by saying right for the restaurant sites we want to migrate them first and they can just use webmail which took away the, the requirement for any specific version of, of Outlook to be installed at site. So have you had to upgrade any hardware in any of your restaurants no. as part of this? You, no. So you've just gone completely switched over yep. to the webmail? Exactly. Okay, and in head office, did, did, did you need to...? What, what we did at head office, we still had, we didn't need to upgrade any kit, but we did have people on various versions of Outlook. And originally we were thinking of just taking some of the um, smaller Office 365 subscriptions with just sort of Exchange Link and maybe SharePoint. But when we reviewed our office estate at head office, and looked at the pricing to have Office 2010 Pro Plus, which comes at an increased charge for the subscription, it kind of seemed the right thing to do to get everybody on the same platform. But we also have users with multiple machines. They've got home machines, they've got laptops, and even executives with a backup laptop. And it meant we could reduce the um, licensing costs across multiple machines for users. So you know, you, you know the kit, you know your, your, yeah. your steps, what you're going to do. How, how, long, how long did you spend on the prep stages? So I guess we first started talking about things around June last year, middle of, middle of 2011, and I think we kicked off the migration in earnest um, during sort of October last year. So it was about three months really looking, and that, that just involved setting up a couple of test PCs in our head office, you know, setting up some test mailboxes, um, doing a lot of test migrations to make sure that everything went smoothly. Because when we did our actual migration, we weren't going to have people going around doing it for our users. It was a case of, right, it's going to happen, this is what you need to do. Um, we prepared documentation and got people to try and follow it. So we looked around the I looked around the office, found the most technically minded person that has the biggest problem with computers and sort of sat them down with a bit of paper and said, follow these instructions and then feedback so that we knew by the time we sent it out and went forward with the migration, people would be able to, to do what they needed to do. So you did a lot of early prep with your staff as well yeah. in terms of sort of staff training yeah. and, and user-led migration? Yeah. Okay. Was there much training other than the kind of the, the early prep work? Was there much training needed? Did people need anything else to get up to speed with the new? There, was, there wasn't huge amounts of training because it was, like I say, on the day of the migration, the person had to do perhaps 20 minutes, a half an hour of, you know, installing the new version of Office and changing their Outlook settings slightly. Um, but once they were up and running, yes, they were working on a new version of Office, but really they were sort of start with just using the existing, you know, the old functionality. So people were able to sort of carry on fairly seamlessly. It wasn't too much of an interruption. There were a couple of people that had problems, but you know, when we were migrating the amount of people we were to sort of remotely access and help a couple of people wasn't a problem. In terms of managing your teams, we, we talked earlier about um, the, <clears throat> the sequencing of your, of your rollout, that you had, to, you had to be quite careful about how you managed the staff in terms yeah. of diaries, I think. Yeah, we've had restaurants were easy because they just use email. So we, like I say, we sort of did 10 a day for a couple of weeks. They went straight onto webmail, no problem. Um, one of the caveats that we found for the method of migration we chose, which was straight from 2003 into Office 365, on-premise to cloud, and a stage migration rather than all at once, was the, um, the viewing of free busy information for colleagues and shared diaries. And it kind of, to start with, it's like, oh, that's fairly minor, we can work around that. But when I sat down and planned it out, it worked out that at every stage there would be a break in the link because we're hierarchical and sort of managers can see their team and their juniors' diaries. You were always going to have a particular person that was on the hosted solution and one that was still on-prem where there was a break. So we really had to plan that quite carefully. This wasn't your first foray into the cloud as a, as a business, was it? How, how much did that help in terms of getting this planned and running smoothly? Um, well, we sort of took the decision, or, or I did, I guess, a couple of years ago, that to help maintain a sort of a lean IT infrastructure, we wanted to get stuff out of our offices, out of our server room, whenever anything came to the end of life or expired, rather than replace it with a, another sort of bit of tin or another server or what have you, we wanted to move it to a managed solution. 
Um, we, I guess the first thing we did again was a couple of years ago, we moved all our HR systems into the cloud, which is a real true software as a service access through a web browser, through a proven solution that's used quite a lot through our industry. And that worked very well for us. And, and since we've also moved our accounting systems, our food and beverage stock control and our food and beverage ordering all into cloud-based systems. And those, so those, um, those projects would have given you a real kind of an insight into the way to, you, you could have made your mistakes early on. Yeah, and no, I think it just, roll out. Uh, at a, um, a board level, when I had to go in and sell in the Office 365 thing, and people were, you, you know, were saying, well, we've heard cloud and it's a buzzword, but are there problems with it? We could easily turn around and say, well, we've been doing HR in the cloud for two years, and they were like, oh, is that, in, you know, <laughs> they didn't realise that we'd, we'd been there, so it's good. Okay, so how, how, how is everything set up now, So now that you've done your migration? So now we're totally migrated. Um, we're still running all our sites using webmail because they're finding it very easy. And, and with sort of Outlook Web Access in 2010, it's much more feature rich than it was in 2003. So there's no, no urgency to upgrade their office or anything like that. Um, our head office is bedded down now. I see you know, everyone using the, the new version of the email. We're starting to use Link now as well. Um, I think we had our first online meeting yesterday with people in London, Manchester, Birmingham, Brighton and Portsmouth and I think one up in Glasgow as well so that's you know a bit of a wow factor it's suddenly quite a lot of travel costs saved so that's nice and then we've got um, we're, we're planning to move to SharePoint later in the year and start implementing an intranet. So from start to finish how long how long did the migration take? So I guess we the first first mailbox moved I think I said earlier around October November with the project starting around June and the last mailbox moved around the 20th of December. And so you you were doing this in the peak season of sociability upgrading restaurants? Yeah but the, I think the thing with Yo Sushi that's quite different is you know everyone thinks restaurants busy Christmas and what have you um, and we have so many different outlets in travel hubs and shopping centres and various other places that it's not necessarily the big time of year for it for us that it is for everyone else. Yes, it's busy when people are shopping, but you don't necessarily have a Christmas party in EO. So what would you say you've learned from this process or previous cloud um, deployments that you that you've done? Advice for the Reg reader at home who who might be thinking about this? Anything that perhaps you would have done differently if you could do it again? I think with previous sort of moves to cloud software, it's been relatively simple. And this one was as well, but there were a few things that we came up against that perhaps we should have researched a little bit more in advance. You know, we read and sort of thought, yeah, that's going to do what it says on the tin, and it didn't, and we had to sort of find plans elsewhere. And the biggest thing we found with that was with the, um, the email archiving. Um, we sort of tested it, you know, thought, yeah, that seems quite good, works fairly fast, we can access our emails really quickly. But what we really didn't take into consideration, we had a lot of historical email that we needed to bring into that archive. And once we started to try and do that, we found the import process wasn't very good. So we then went, went back to a third, you know, a third party archiving solution that was compatible with Office 365. So Billy, thanks very much for talking to no us. Problem. Thanks for your time. Thank you.